I'd like to commence with an incident that occurred at the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu where there was an old man he came forth complaining about his child and he said O oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen I have a child who is disobedient I have a child who does this I have a child who does that and he said a whole list of things and Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu listened to the old man and then called the boy called the young child and tried to advise him saying do you know what your father is complaining about you and you need to fulfill the rights of your father you need to fulfill the rights of your father so the young boy says can I ask a question and Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu says yes you can ask a question what is it he says do I not have any rights what are my rights you know nowadays people like to hear the word rights what are my rights I need to know my rights so the young boy is asking what are my rights I'd like to know that so Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu explained to the young boy what his rights were and that is very interesting because tonight we will all see a new dimension some of us may be knowing this incident the first right that the child has is for the parent to select a good spouse subhanallah so before the child ever came into existence it was already the right of your unborn children who were not even mentioned that you had chosen a decent mother for them that is something very deep no religion goes into this depth so it is the right of our children that we married somebody decent one of the reasons is obviously when you have married someone decent it becomes much easier for the child to then be brought up in a decent fashion in a decent manner whereas when marriage was only for beauty or it was only for wealth or it was for the wrong reasons for example sometimes we can ask ourselves what do you expect from this if for example a man has married a woman who doesn't even know how to speak who swears and shouts then what type of behavior would that man expect his children to have in order to remedy this in the Sharia we are taught that it is the right of your unborn children even prior to your marriage it is the right of those who will be born to you if you ever do have children that you select a good spouse and this is not only for men but even for women that is why a few days back in one of my talks I made mention of the fact that when you are selecting a spouse in a nutshell ask yourself is this person fit to be the mother of my children is this person fit to be the father of my children and I hope that the youngsters who are not yet married young boys and girls I hope we can take a lesson from this we don't need to go for the next most beautiful woman we don't need to go for the next most beautiful woman but we rather go for a person who is beautiful from inside and a person who is fit to be the parent of our children meaning either the mother or the father like I said moments ago the young boys who want to get married need to ask themselves is this person that I'd like to marry fit to be the mother of my children 
And in the case of a female, is this person fit to be the father of my children when she is selecting or she is deciding whether or not to marry someone? That is the first issue. So, the fact that we have married correctly is already part and parcel The fact that we have married correctly is already part and parcel of the right of the unborn child being full, uh, meaning the unborn child being fulfilled, that is of utmost importance. The second issue mentioned by Umar ibn al-Khattab, he says it was the right of your father to give you a good name, to name you with a brilliant name. These good names, obviously we have names that have a good meaning. We have names of the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have names that are mentioned in the Qur'an. We have other names that really have a very, very good meaning to the degree that you would be proud to call your child with that name. Is it that we still want to choose names that just sound Western? In my part of the world, people come and ask questions. Can I name my child this? Can I name my child that? And believe me, as the years are passing and as the world is progressing, we find Muslims wanting to stay away from Islamic names for whatever reasons. They are worried, my child must not be associated with Islam. May Allah protect us. Some people have that notion where they think that I'd rather name the child something which will sound more Western. And they will debate with you. Why can't I name the child this and that? The reality is, it's the child's right that you choose a good name. Because at that age, the child has no understanding. You don't want the child to grow up cursing you. That you know, the name I've got is very bad. If any name has the possibility or probability of having a bad meaning in Islam, we are taught to abstain from it. When I say having a bad meaning, if it has a possibility of having a bad meaning in any language. For example, you might have an Arabic name which has a good meaning in Arabic. But in your native language, that name might sound like a swear word. It has happened. In some languages, you have an Arabic name, but it sounds very bad in our language. In that case, it would be the right of the child that you abstain from that name. Not because it has a bad meaning in Arabic, but because it has a bad meaning in other languages. And you wouldn't like the child, for example, you wouldn't like that child to grow up thinking and saying, why did my father name me with this name? So that is the second right that was mentioned. And the third right is, and Umar ibn al-Khattab is telling this little boy, that as you grew up, the first things to be taught to you should have been the Qur'an. The first things to be taught to you should have been the Qur'an. The word of the Creator who created you. So the young boy looks and says, You know, Umar ibn al-Khattab, you are Amir al -Mu'mineen. I'd like to tell you my father has not fulfilled any, any of these rights of mine. And he only stopped at these three. Imagine if he had to go on and on. He says, firstly, he married someone off the street who had a very bad record. May Allah protect us. Very bad record. Secondly, he gave me such a terrible name. And up to now, I don't even know what the Quran is all about. There we are. So then Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu diverted the admonition to the father. Saying, you are coming to complain about your child. You are the one who has not even fulfilled any of the rights of the child. And you are 
coming to say my child is disobedient and my child is this and my child is that, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect.